Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and I got quite a few questions that were asked about the new SDR Play network receiver. And so this, of course, is something that is intriguing for a lot of people, and you're wondering exactly what it is. Is it, you know, something that resembles something else, like the Kiwi SDRs and so on? So here are some of the answers that I can give you about this network device. I know as the play looks at the videos regularly, so they might add comments or add something that they want to uh, talk about. So of course I've been playing with the uh, NRSPST network SDR. It's basically uh, a um, device that is an SDR play um, RSPDX um receiver but it's the revision 2 model so it's the latest update of the rspdx that is in there um coupled to a small little uh, computer that will run its own lightweight software and it of course connects to your network but it can connect directly to um, so a lot of people are like, well, this is this a Kiwi SDR from SDR Play? No, it's not. This is not meant to be a competition at all to the Kiwi SDR. It's not meant to be just placed online and give tens of people access to your uh, software to find a receiver. It's not in the same game. It's not meant for that. That's not the way they think about this device. So this device, of course, has updatable firmware. Uh, I've already updated the firmware a couple of times. And it also has, of course, uh, its own menu that you can uh, go and change things inside, connect to a um, network, a Wi-Fi network or Ethernet. And, of course, use it as a standard, you know, as DR play as DR if you want to. The idea behind this is that you would have a plug-and-play network SDR that is for your own personal use, and that could be used remotely. So it exists purely in the sense that if you have some special location where you would like to have a receiver that you could actually plug in and access from your home, or any other place, this is what it's meant for. It is not meant to be shared, really. It's meant to be, you can share it with people you trust, but it's not the idea behind this device. Uh, that's that's called a Kiwi SDR. If that's what you want, that's what you should get. How many connections at the same time this can hold? It depends on the way that you will actually interface with the device. Uh, the bandwidth you're going to use, the type of connection, either the web interface from within the software that you can get through a web browser or through SDR Connect software. So it can technically go up to eight receivers, eight um, users, sorry. But it will always depend on how you connect. It could be less depending on the bandwidth that you're using. It has its own uh, set of limits that you know they need to observe to keep the device uh, running uh, uh, in the specs that they want. So really, it, it is really for those that have, say, maybe you've got a cabin in the woods that's connected to the internet. As nobody around, no noise, you could put it there, and then you go back home, to the city and you will you know connect to it it will be your own little device connected out there and um, you know used remotely in a low noise environment I found a, a, a great use for it here I for a while didn't have any connection to my VHF UHF antenna in the backyard which is there but I had no way of, you know, I would have had to buy some um, wire and some cables and stuff. And I didn't want to add another cable that 
is very long and comes in from the back to my office. Well, now I just go and put my N RST, um, RSP SD SDR in the kitchen. It connects Wi-Fi to my router, and I have access to my VHF UHF antenna in what is essentially a very uh, broadband uh, receiver. It goes up to 2 gigahertz. So this is what it's all about. And uh, this device is um, available that you can connect through, like I said, the software, the AirConnect, through a web browser. And eventually, they're going to have apps. You're going to have an app dedicated in Android, for example, to connecting and listening and using the device, which is also very cool. So um, this is the basics of what I have to say about this device. And uh, yes, it's an RSPDX, but it's the revision two. It's a newer update. I have noticed some differences, including the fact that it doesn't have to have, doesn't seem to have the images that I've noticed in the original RSPDX that I have here um, on the lower frequency. So it does essentially it is an upgrade also at the same time. So uh, this is what it's all about, and of course, I'm continuing to play around with it, doing some changes and some tests. Um, so these are some of the answers to questions that some people have had on this device. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.